Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. When it comes to repositories, especially in a setup with Entity Framework Core, you know that debates are very heated. However, I am on the side that is actually against the use of repositories when it comes to Entity Framework Core. And the primary reason why I think this is that it adds an unedited abstraction as the DB context in Entity Framework Core already encapsulates this idea of a repository through the DB sets and the idea of the unit of work through, for instance, the save changes method. However, in this video, I would like to go into one very common objection against this idea of not using repositories, and I want to show you a technique that pretty much by itself will make the use of repositories redundant. So let's take a look first at, at a very simple sample application that I have set up with using repositories. And I have set it up trying to follow the clean architecture principles, even if everything is in one single project. And I know that everybody nowadays does videos or content on clean architecture, but if you would like to hear my take on clean architecture and how I would explain clean architecture, please let me know in the comments and then I would consider doing a video on that. Now, back to this idea, we have here a very simple setup with the models that would be our domain layer. And here I have a very simple model, which is a post with an idea and content and a date created. Then I have this application layer, which has these abstractions where I have placed obviously this iPost repository. And then I have this data where I placed the DB context. And then here I have placed a folder repositories. And here I have the implementation of the iPost repository, which is basically this one. Now, still in the application layer, what we have is the services. And here we have a post service. So in this video, I have decided to go for a services setup because most of my videos are using Mediator and I wanted to make a change. So what we do in the service, that's a very common setup. We just inject the repository and then we use the repository in this case to get a post by ID. Last but not least, we have this post controller that injects a post service. And here we use this post service to get post by ID and return it in an OK object result. Now let's move over to the other application that I have set up, which is exactly the same application. It does exactly the same thing. However, the setup is just a little bit different. We still have the same post model as we had previously. But if you take a look here in our application layer, we don't have this abstraction folder because I don't have an abstraction, an interface for, for an iPost repository. And if we look in this data, we have this blogging context, which just contains the regular DB context and nothing else. And by the way, I have used this method to make sure that I see some data here because I am using the in-memory provider for these two applications. Now let's go to this post service and the way that this would usually be set up in a way or when we do not use repositories is that we would inject directly the blogging DB context here in our service. Obviously, if you're using handler, you would inject the DB context in the handler. And then we have this get post by the async method. And here we use directly the DB context. So we don't use that unneeded abstraction that adds just another layer of complexity. We just use the DB context to perform this very simple task. And the objection that I want to go into this video has to do with this one, because if we take a look at this and maybe let's place it like this, this is a very, very, very simple query. But usually when we use repositories, we do a lot of different stuff. We do maybe a lot of includes, we do a lot of filtering. We might even do different database calls because we might to take information from different parts of the database and return the result. So this would kind of like result our service methods or our handlers, if you're using mediator, being cluttered with a lot of logic that contains or that is related to data retrieval for that specific scenario. And this objection is, from my point of view, a good one. However, there is a technique that I want to show you right now that could very easily help you to keep everything clean. And to do this, let's move in this data folder and here add a new directory. And I will call this directory extensions. And what I'll do, I'll create here a new class that I will call blogging DB contest extensions. And as the name implies, this would be a class that contains its extension methods for the blogging DB context. And what I'm about to do is I will create an extension method on the blogging DB context that returns a nullable post. So this is the get post by ID and it is on the blogging DB contest class and it also gets an ID. And now we can move the entire data retrieval process here in this extension method on the blogging DB context. So when I go back to this post service, it means that I can just simply remove this and replace it with a call to this specific method. Obviously, I need to add, to add the import, the using, and everything is okay. So you see that right now, using this very simple technique, I have decluttered all my data retrieval from my service method, and it sits in a dedicated method or extension method on the DB context. 
However, there will very shortly be another objection to this. Like if we take a look here, we have this get post by ID method. But obviously, in real application, we would have a lot of different DB sets or different instances where we want to get certain entities by IDs, not only posts. So this means that I would have at least one get by ID method for each of that specific entities, which obviously it's not really the best case. So what we can do here is simply create, for instance, this public static t get by ID of t method, which is also an extension method on the blogging DB context, but it is a generic one. And we also have to make this constraint that t is a class. So here in this extension method, we can start to return this context set of t. And if we place a dot here, we see that we have this first or default. However, the problem is that in this case on the x, I have only these methods that are basically on the object class. So I cannot use the ID. This seems to be a blocker. However, Entity Framework Core has a very simple solution also to this. So the only thing that we need to do is use this EF and on EF we have this property and we say that of property of type int and here as incoming parameters we pass an x and we need to pass the name of the property of x that we want to map here and in this case the property is named id and obviously I will make this equal to id or the id that comes in by this method so now I can get any type of entity by id not only the posts so if I go once again back to my post service, the thing that I can do here instead of using this method, I will use this generic one with context, get by ID of post, and then I am passing in the ID. And coming here to these extensions, you can see that for all the things that are kind of like generic or common for entities, you can implement these generic methods, but then you can still implement extension methods that are very specific for a very specific data retrieval in a business use case. And you can do pretty much everything that you do in the repository just here, right there, without the need to create this unedited abstraction. In the meantime, the post service will still be clean, meaning that it will not be cluttered with data retrieval logic. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you're for the first time here. Make sure to also hit the notification bell so that you are always notified when there is some new things here on this channel. And if you have any thoughts, any comments, or just want to get in touch with me, don't be shy and head over to the comment section and leave me a comment and I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.